Everything has a carbon footprint. Sending an email, a glass of water, even your socks have a carbon footprint, which incidentally are about a thousand times higher than the stuff on the screen right now. But does any of it actually matter in the grand scheme of things? It can be really difficult to understand the relative emissions of different things in our lives and society. Is it worth focusing on personal changes like avoiding flying, driving less, or eating less meat? Or is it better to focus on system-level changes, like writing to your local political representative? Or both? To give a sense of perspective, I've collected about as many things as I could bear to source and edit for a single video. I think by seeing the scale of greenhouse gas emissions, you can start to make much more informed decisions about where to prioritize your effort. Oh, and here are those socks we mentioned earlier. One key theme of interest during the early part of this video is the imbalance between the lives of those in developed and developing countries. For example, things that may seem unassuming to someone in the UK or the US, like a portion of beef or a short drive to the shops, are significantly more emission intensive than the daily footprint of those in developing nations. And this will sound counterintuitive, but the emissions of developing countries should be higher at least until renewables and nuclear energy are more widespread, as more energy is vital to increasing living standards. But according to YouTube's analytics, the vast majority of this channel's viewers live in developed countries, and as living standards are much higher, it's essential that the emissions of these countries drop rapidly. A lot of that will happen as we decarbonize. As we move away from fossil fuels, the subsequent fall in emissions will massively reduce the carbon footprint of our daily lives. However, some of the more emission-intensive activities we've seen, like eating beef and flying, aren't simply solved by decarbonizing. In fact, these are largely driven by consumer patterns. If people choose to eat less meat and fly less for holidays, then the market demand for these things decreases. But that brings us back to the main question of this video. How much responsibility does the average person actually have? We're not that far into the video, and each one of these rings is 10 times larger than the last, meaning the video follows an exponential trend. So whatever's at the end of the video is responsible for the majority of global emissions. Interestingly, when collecting the data for this video, there was a huge void between individual and corporate or global emissions. To an extent, this is unsurprising. Of course, the emissions of corporations and countries are far higher than that of the average person. But that also means they arguably have far more responsibility to reduce these footprints. Many countries and companies are beginning this process, but it can be really hard to work out which are genuinely committed and which are just greenwashing. And on the topic of greenwashing, the term carbon footprint was actually popularized by a wildly successful 2005 ad campaign by BP, designed to shift the responsibility of the climate crisis, or global warming as it was usually called at the time, to the individual shifting the focus from their impact to your footprinty socks. There's a great video on the topic by Climate Town that you can find a link to in the description. Armed with that knowledge, the average person is more than justified in playing an Uno reverse card against fossil fuel companies and asking them to reduce their footprint. However, rather than getting stuck in an infinite loop of Uno reverse cards, it's crucial that both companies and individuals make more sustainable choices. When it comes to companies, as we've mentioned before, it can be particularly difficult to work out if they're genuinely committed or just greenwashing. If a company is bigger than a startup, a great way to check is to see if they have a net zero target validated by an institution called the Science Based Targets Initiative. They're an independent body who validate companies' net zero strategies. And until countries have rigorous environmental and climate regulation, this is one of the best ways to check. On the other hand, when it comes to individuals, one of the best ways to incentivize the average person to make sustainable choices is through political decision making. If you want to assess the political ambitions of a country, the first place to look is at their net zero target. This will give a good indication of their statement of intent, but unfortunately, it's no guarantee they really are making the changes required to reach net zero. For that, I'd recommend taking a look at a website called Climate Action Tracker. It's an independent scientific project that assesses the quality of a country's climate policy and is a really useful resource. So, back to our original question, does your carbon footprint matter in the context of global emissions? Even with all of this data, it can still be hard to answer definitively. However, it's clear that both personal and system level changes play a role in shaping our environmental impact globally. Maybe you'd like to dig deep into the data to answer these kinds of questions. If so, then you should check out the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant sets a standard for interactive learning in science, maths, and computer science, and is great for that exact reason. It's completely interactive. 
It creates an environment where you're an active learner, rather than a passive one, where you learn by experimenting and solving problems at your own pace. There are thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics, and there are new lessons added every single month. That way, when it comes to doing your own analysis and visualization, you'll have already practiced the skills to present data effectively. If you'd like to get started, you can access a premium membership for free for 30 days and the first 200 signups will get an additional 20% off an annual plan by visiting brilliant.org slash polyhedral. I'd also like to say thank you to some of my colleagues at MyCarbon for auditing the data used in this video. In the next video, we'll be trying a little experiment involving an API and using that as an excuse to describe how computers see carbon.